Chapter 210 The Excellence of Friday Prayer Allah the Exalted says, Then, when the Jummah Salat is ended, you may disperse through the land and seek the bounty of Allah by working. And remember, Allah much, that you may be successful. 62.10 Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reported, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, The best day on which the sun has risen is Friday. On that day, Adam, peace be upon him, was created. He was admitted to Jannah, and he was expelled therefrom. Muslim Commentary This hadith tells us of the excellence of Jummah. Many achievements were made on this day, which also go to prove its excellent position in Islam. 1148 Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reported, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, If anyone performs wudu properly, then comes to the Friday prayer, listens to the khutbah, religious talk, attentively, and keeps silent. His minor sins between that Friday and the following Friday will be forgiven, with the addition of three more days, but he who touches pebbles has caused an interruption. Muslim Commentary 1. If anyone performs ablution properly, means does it in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet, peace be upon him. That is to say, one should not exceed the prescribed limits, nor should one use water extravagantly. One should wash every organ of the body involved in wudu at the most for three times. One should neither use water in excess of the need, nor leave any of the organs unwashed or partly washed in wudu. This hadith also makes it evident that it is more meritorious to perform wudu at home. 2. Sins of ten days are pardoned because every virtue has at least ten times reward. Here, sins mean minor sins as the major ones are not forgiven without sincere repentance, nor are hakuk al-ibad, i.e. rights of people, forgiven without compensation. 3. One should listen to the khutbah quietly with full attention. One must avoid toying with anything such as straws, one's watch, etc., as this is a useless exercise, which will doubtlessly deprive one of the Friday reward. 1149 Abu Hurairah anhu reported, The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, the five daily prescribed Salat and Friday prayer to the next Friday prayer and the fasting of Ramadan to the next Ramadan is expiation of the sins committed in between them, so long as major sins are avoided. Muslim Commentary This hadith makes it clear that the good actions mentioned in it are means of forgiveness of sins, but only if one saves oneself from major sins. Thus, it is abundantly clear that the sins which are pardoned through these good actions are minor sins. Major sins will not be forgiven by means of salat and psalm, fasting. Sincere repentance for them is indispensable. 1150 Ibn Umar and Abu Huraira anhum, reported, We heard the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him saying, while delivering khutbah on his wooden pulpit, Either some people, i.e. hypocrites, stop neglecting the Friday prayers, or Allah will seal their hearts and they will be among the heedless. Muslim Commentary They will be among the heedless means those who will become utterly unmindful of the remembrance of Allah and His orders. Such people are munafikun, hypocrites, whose abode will be hell. It means that negligence of Jummah for a long time is such a serious offense that it can even seal a man's heart, which finishes all hopes and chances of one's improvement. 1151 Ibn Umar anhuma reported, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, When one of you intends to come for the Friday prayer, he should take a bath, al-Bukhari and Muslim. 1152 Abu Sayyid al-Khudri radiallahu anhu, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Taking a bath before coming to Friday prayers is obligatory on every adult. Al-Bukhari and Muslim Commentary On the strength of this hadith, some ulama have regarded bath for Salat al Jummah as wajib, obligatory. And those who differ from this view, like Imam al-Nawawi, to resort the interpretation of wajib made here. Whether ghusl is wajib or desirable, it applies to women as well. If they like to go to the mosque for Salat al Jummah, the manner of taking a bath for the Friday prayer is similar to the manner of performing ghusl after sexual intercourse. 1153 Samura Raziullah Anhu reported, 
the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, It suffices to perform wudu properly for the Friday prayer, but it is better to take a bath. Abu Daud and At-Tirmidhi Commentary This hadith supports the contention of those who do not hold the ghusl obligatory for two reasons. Firstly, it allows one to perform wudu. In fact, it has been regarded good. Secondly, the ghusl has been regarded better, from which one can safely infer the permission to leave it. In any case, there is no doubt about its being masnoon, sunnah of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and mustahib, desirable. The time of the ghusl is from the daybreak to the time of Salat al Jummah. 11.54 Salman radiallahu anhu reported, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, If a man takes a bath on Friday or purifies himself as much as he can with wudu, oils his hair, applies whatever perfume available in his house, sets forth for the mosque, does not separate two people to make a seat for himself, performs salat what is prescribed for him, remains silent when the imam speaks, his minor sins between that Friday and the following Friday will be forgiven. Al-Bukhari Commentary this hadith stresses the following four points. 1. The need to purify oneself as much as possible on Jummah. One must use hair oil and perfume so that others do not feel any irritation on the bad smell which may rise from one's clothes. 2. One is advised to go for Salat al-Jummah early so that he has not to jump over the shoulder of others, nor has to sit tightly between two persons. If a person goes to the mosque late, then he should occupy the available seat and observe full manners. 3. One should perform nawafil after reaching the mosque. 4. One should listen to the khutbah quietly. A person who observes all the manners mentioned in this hadith will receive full benefits of Salat al-Jummah. 11.55 Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reported, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, He who takes a bath on Friday like the bath for ceremonial purity, and then goes to the mosque. He is like one who offers a camel as a sacrifice to seek the pleasure of Allah, and he who comes at the second hour is like one who offers a cow to win the pleasure of Allah, and he who comes at the third hour is like one who offers a ram with horns in sacrifice, and he who comes at the fourth hour is like one who offers a hen, and he who comes at the fifth hour is like one who offers an egg. And when the Imam ascends the pulpit, the angels who write the names of those who come to the mosque before the coming of the Imam close their record in order to listen to the khutbah. Al-Bukhari and Muslim Commentary This hadith mentions the merits of going early for Salat al-Jummah and narrates inducements provided for it. The earlier person goes for it, the greater his reward will be. In fact, the reward for it goes on diminishing in proportion to the delay that he makes in reaching the mosque for this purpose, so much so that he who reaches the masjid after the khutbah will be totally deprived of the benefits which go with it because his name does not figure in the register which shows men of merits. Salat al-Jummah is also attended by angels. This fact shows the eminence for the khutbah of Salat al-Jummah and the Salat itself. The ghusl performed on Jummah should be done with the same meticulous care as is done in ghusl janaba. post coition bath. 11.56 Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reported, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, While talking about the merits of Friday, there is a time on Friday at which a Muslim, while he or she is performing salat and is supplicating, will be granted whatever he or she is supplicating for. And he, peace be upon him, pointed with his hand to indicate that this period of time is very short. Al-Bukhari and Muslim Commentary This hadith mentions another distinction of Jummah, namely a movement in which every prayer that a person then makes is granted with the condition that what one is asking for is good and lawful. It is a very short movement and its time has also not been revealed. For this reason, one should remember Allah frequently and pray to Him on Jummah so that one attains that moment when prayers are answered. Prayers can also be answered outside Salat, if one happens to be supplicating at the specified moment. 11.57 Abu Burda bin Abu Musa al-Ashari radiallahu anhu reported, Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhu said to me, did you hear your father narrating something from the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, about this special moment during Friday? 
I said, yes, I heard him report from the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. It occurs between the time when the Imam sits down on the pulpit after the first khutbah and the time Salat is over. Muslim. Commentary. There is a difference of opinion among ulama in respect of this moment. Some ulama prefer the version given in this hadith. That is, this moment could be any time in the period from the time the Imam sits down after the first khutbah and the end of Salat al jummah But Shaykh al-Albani has regarded this hadith as mokuf, i.e. its chain of narrators does not reach up to the Prophet, peace be upon him. For this reason, other ulama have inclined to a marfu hadith, i.e. its chain of narrators reaches up to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and urged to find this moment in the last hour of Asr before the Maghrib. 1158 Aus bin Aus anhu reported, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Among the best of your days is Friday. On that day, pray to Allah to exalt my mention frequently, for your such supplications are presented to me. Abu Daud. Commentary. This hadith brings forth the following three points. 1. The auspiciousness of time further enhances the merits of virtuous deeds, as is evident from the stress on reciting more and more salutation on the Prophet, peace be upon him, on Friday. 2. On Jummah, salutation is presented to the Prophet, peace be upon him. This statement goes to prove that he does not hear salutation of anyone directly, either from near or from far. There is a famous hadith which says that he hears it from near, but this is not sahih, technically. Therefore, the truth of the matter is that he does not hear it directly. It is the angels who convey it to him. 3. The most well-worded salutation is Ibrahimi salutation, because the Prophet, peace be upon him, himself taught it to his companions. The salutation is, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin, wa la ali Muhammadin, kama sallayta ala Ibrahima, wa la ali Ibrahima, inna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin, wa la ali Muhammadin, kama barakta ala Ibrahima, wa la ali Ibrahima, inna ka hamidun majid.